Hello there, I'm a member of the training team, and today I'm going to show you how to use the patient info tab. This tab is one of the most important features of our system, and it's one of the most basic. You will use this tab to fill in all of your patient's demographics on their first visit. The information in this tab must be complete and accurate, or it will lead to denied claims. Let's begin our discussion of this tab by creating a new patient. To create a new patient, you're going to want to click on Schedule. Okay, great. In here, we're going to enter in the patient's name. And her last name, Kelly Brown, date of birth. Let's say she was born in 1992. And on August 10th. And then we'll put in a phone number for her. Okay, great. Go down here and click on create. And then I just created the account. Now the message highlighted in red should pop up, just like it did right here. That's because I have not yet filled out all the vital information needed in the account. Click on this message, and it's going to take you to our patient info tab. In the future, you'll be able to enter either the first or last name of the patient in one of the text fields and hit enter. Let's use Jeff Johnson as an example, someone I've had in the system for a long time. Let's go back to the day schedule. To find someone like Jeff, all you have to do is enter in his first name, first or last name rather. All right, then you hit enter, click on the highlighted text, Click on Patient, and you're back into his Patient Info tab. Okay, now let's complete the example I began showing you before with Kelly Brown. And now I can just do the same thing with her. There's Kelly Brown. There's that. Okay, so you should notice a couple important things here in Kelly's account. She has been given an account number, and we know her birth date, so we know her age. So some of the information is already there. Now you must fill in all the fields marked with the red asterisk because they are required. It's a good practice to hit the save button when you have done something significant. If you don't hit save, then all your data will be lost. Let's put in her sex. Single. You need to fill all this out. Okay, so now I filled in all the required fields. Even though not all the information is required, there are some non-required fields you really should fill out. For example, you should fill in the first visit date field right here. This date will show up on the top of the travel card, and it will be a nice date for reference. Now let's fill in the insurance tabs. The primary tab should contain information about the main insurance that the patient uses for their health care. You should begin by selecting the self button over here. Other insurances that the patient may rely on can be entered in under the secondary and the tertiary tabs. Now we have a little more to fill out though for Kelly. After you have selected self, fill out the policy number. If you have the group number, fill it in. And if you know the copay plan deductible, put that in too. These aren't required though, but if you have them, it's good to put them in there. Now you definitely want to put in the insurance plan and the insurance address. You can come down here and just enter in your insurance. Then you want to click on the insurance plan name search. And then you'll find its address in here.
Now that's filled out, and we're going to go ahead and hit the Save button at the top of the page. If someone signs documents for or pays the bills for a patient, that person's information can be filled in under the Guarantor tab. Let's say Kelly's mom pays her medical bills, so she would be the guarantor in this case. Okay, so there it is. Now in some cases, a lawyer's contact information would be entered in here, if, for example, any statement should be sent to a lawyer instead of to the patient. Now lastly, entering the contact information for someone that the patient can rely on in a medical emergency under the emergency contact form. Here it is right here. In this case, let's say Kelly's mother is also her emergency contact, though certainly the emergency contact and the guarantor won't always be the same person. And once you're done filling in all of the emergency contact information, you can go ahead and click Save. The last thing you should know is that the red message doesn't go away after you save. You have to go ahead and refresh. And there you are. No red message. And here's your patient info tab. Well that's all there is to this video. I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, go ahead and click like at the bottom of the page. Goodbye for now, and have a great day.